That first meeting with Chris's ghost really shook me up. I normally don't believe in the supernatural, but she looked and sounded so real. Asking about our daughters would have naturally been the first thing she'd have done if she could come back. And dare I say this, back from the dead. And oh my God, that laughter. It was unmistakably Chris. Was I going mad? Or could it have been a reaction to the antidepressants I'd begun taking a few months ago? Maybe it was that I was now consuming a lot of alcohol as a form of self-medication. Something I'd been warned not to mix with these kinds of drugs during the period they'd been prescribed. Ah, the alcohol. Shortly after being sent home from the hospital, and as soon as I could get out of bed and walk a short distance on my own, I'd been sneaking drinks on the sly. I knew the booze couldn't cure any of my ills, yet it numbed me, and the number I became, the less I felt the agonising anguish of having lost my beloved, beautiful wife. In my opinion, it was doing a better job than the Lexapro, the Welbutrin, and the Remeron or Spravato. In fact, all the prescriptions appeared to achieve were to make my mouth dry, have nausea, harder to think clearly, clumsier and more exhausted than I already felt. Thus, without consulting anyone, I stopped taking the antidepressants. I'd also sworn to stop drinking, but after the unbearable ache of my loneliness returned, and in order to quell that feeling, I resumed my secretive habits. But I was knocking back increasing amounts of alcohol. Regardless of what I took or didn't take, Chris's ghost had been returning almost on a daily basis, at least once a day. And you know what? Those visits were the highlight of my now meaningless days and nights, so I looked forward to them with eager anticipation, however brief they were. Over the next year, I'd not only developed a nasty drinking problem, but I'd also gained a considerable amount of weight as a result of constant overeating and no exercise, especially all that Rocky Road ice cream I was scarfing down on a much too regular basis. I'd become a drunken, bloated blimp who stood at least when I could stand without falling, which had become increasingly challenging, at six foot one and weighed in at a way over 220 pounds. To put it kindly, a courtesy which I no longer felt was deserved, I was currently an absolute mess. What made it worse was I suspected that Anya and Noika knew exactly what was going on. The way they both looked at me with horror and pain in their expressions was excruciating so I drank and ate even more junk food to numb that pain too. One day I discovered my supply of ice cream and a secret stash of hooch was gone. I knew that I hadn't consumed those items entirely, so the twins must have gotten rid of what remained. That sent me into a blind rage. How dare they? I'm their father, damn it. Well, maybe not their biological father, but I'm their dad. Maybe I hadn't been acting like that recently, but I did deserve to be regarded and respected as any other person would. Then I heard that sound of the penny dropping as the reality slowly sank in. That was something I'd lost the right to expect from anyone because I'd become a drunken, fat, worthless and stupid, stinking piece of strange. So what did I do to turn things around and get back on track? Absolutely freaking nothing. Chris's ghost was the only one who hadn't seemed to notice these negative and dangerous changes in me. She still loved me and laughed at all my jokes. My wife still found me interesting and witty. Was my lover's spectre the only soul still okay with what I'd become since her death? If it didn't bother her, then why would I care if it bothered anyone else? As long as she still loved me, then why the hell would I even consider caring what anyone else thought? Chris was all that mattered to me. Who cares if I drank like a fish and that all I ever wanted to eat these days were pizzas and cheeseburgers and french fries and greasy onion rings and potato chips and the super extra butter hot buttered popcorn and Cheetos and cookies and cakes and candy and tub after tub after tub after tub of Rocky Road ice cream. Other than her, I didn't give a fickle flying fig about anything, any of them thought. Then I heard the sound of that second penny dropping when a realisation hit me harder than a rabbit punch to the head. Person. It was only a ghost, if there really were such a thing as ghosts, who popped in uninvited whenever it fancied. It wasn't a person I'd spoken with during these occasions. 
occasions that for some reason now hadn't been occurring as often. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my frigging God. What was happening to me? So, you know what I did next? I found my wallet, grabbed a credit card and picked up the phone. In the following sequence, these are the places I called. First the liquor store and ordered a fresh supply of booze. Next was a nearby food store that made deliveries and requested they send over an extra large tub of Rocky Road ice cream, a box of Orville Redenbacher Ultimate Butter Popcorn along with a bottle of popping and topping oil, a supersized extra large bag of Lay's potato chips and a family sized bag of Cheetos. Then I called a local pizzeria to have them deliver an extra extra large pizza topped with double cheese, pepperoni and sausage. I'd show them, damn it. I'd really show them all that I didn't give a smelly pile of shranjay what any of them thought about me any longer. Who were they to have done what they did to me?